Well, I'm so excited this morning to have Faith Wangoi and Wairi Mumboro, two women who are go-getters, and especially when it comes to making your life a lot easier, which is what I love. They're here this morning. They've come back from San Francisco, right? Yes. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Good Hi, to have you both here. You look great. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you for you. being here. Yeah, right, I'll start with you, Wairi Mumboro. Tell me a little bit, of course, about FINA Consulting, what it is that you do, and how you got started into technology in the first place. Okay. Um, I'm a software engineer. That's my background. I uh, was lucky enough to go and study overseas. I, uh, I went to Australia, University of Sydney, and then after that I started working in Australia because I wanted to get some work experience. And I think at that time is when I had my, I don't know what they call it, that strike. Hey, I aha should, moment. Aha moment. Yeah. I want to move back to Kenya and I want to set up a technology company because I was a consultant and I was working with a lot of um, Indians. We used to outsource a lot to Indians. So okay. I said to myself, um, I think, I mean, I was like, I looked at, at, at the Indians and what they were doing, which was great. And I said, uh, Kenyans can do this too. We've got a lot of talent in Kenya. We've got a lot of local graduates there who are uh, IT experts. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was like, I'll, I'll, I would love to go back home and then establish something that can uh, provide services within the local Kenyan market as well as internationally. Okay. And that was me. We'll delve into the details of that and what it all entails. Yeah. But Faith, you also have uh, a, sim a sort of similar story. You yes. started Dala Ventures. Tell us a little bit about that. So Dala seeks to bridge the gap between investors and entrepreneurs. And um, I happened to be on the Mandela Washington Fellowship last year. And one of my aha moments yeah. <laughs> was when we began to talk to investors and had an opportunity to speak to Chris Saka. And like most investors, they had a different story from what entrepreneurs had. Yeah. And the story was, we have money, we don't know where to find the entrepreneurs, especially bankable entrepreneurs that we can back. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, why entrepreneurs saying there's no money. So clearly there was a gap between those two entities and right. somebody had to come and build those two. Okay. So I started Dala to build that gap. I love it. Absolutely yeah. great. And I love the fact that you guys are about empowering the entrepreneur and, and giving, um, you know, skills and, and things like that. But there has to have been a moment where during that aha moment yeah. where you sat back and thought, yeah, there, there's so much to be done. When I look at the infrastructure at home, there's so much need. Where do I even start? Some of the, uh, the findings before you even decided to dive to the deep end. Tell me a little bit about that, Wairimo. Um, I think... <clears throat> there is uh, there's something we do we, we have in consulting it's called a cycle of change at the top you're an, an informed optimist and then as you start to get into the detail you start to become a pessimist and then and you start to, oh my god this is too much for me I can't do this mm -hmm. and then you start to get out of it as you as you as you realize that it's doable yeah. and uh, yes I did have that moment where I thought I mean I came back and I, I set out to, you know, set the company up and, and started meeting up with different uh, potential clients. And I could say, you know, we're only about one and a half years old, so we are still going through that particular stage. Right. And um, it's, 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 it's had its moments where you, th you think that, okay, uh, this is a bit much. And I think every entrepreneur has that moment. Yeah. There's nothing unique about my business in that respect. But I think, what keeps you going in terms of entrepreneurship is that usually your dream is bigger than you, who you are. Yeah. So you're not doing this just for yourself. You're doing it for someone else. Right. And that's what's kept me going, knowing that eventually this will provide an avenue for employment. That's, that's what has kept thing. me going. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And what about you, Faith? Uh, I, it's, it's crazy. It's a roller coaster. Yeah? <laughs> there are those days when, uh, for me, for example, if I'm, if I'm going to help entrepreneurs, be able to build their businesses right and be able to access capital, I have to have done it myself. Right. And that means if I'm going to be a thought leader, then I have to do it the right way. So it means building a business canvas model from scratch. I had to do my website myself just to be able to look at women who are doing stuff like grocery and say, right. it's doable, you can do it on your own. It's not as hard as it should be. But then the days I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking to myself, come on, just you know, just be a normal girl. <laughs> right. just, just do life as normal girls yeah. should mm -hmm. at this particular age. Exactly. And you just want to throw in the towel and sort of like just go back to status quo. But then again, you think about what this could mean five years from now. How many jobs are going to be created? How many 
entrepreneurs can you breathe life into their businesses okay. and that keeps you going it does doesn't yes, it, it does. absolutely yeah. i mean there are we've made huge strides uh, within the sector uh, on a global scale when you think about the place for women mm -hmm. and specifically now in technology but when you look at your own life uh, from when you are a young girl and you decided what i want to software engineer <laughs> you know and I, this is what i want to do with my life when you start to look at yourself now as a woman in this industry um, what was what has that journey been like and do you feel that the world Silicon Valley India here in Kenya have we embraced that there is a huge space for women in in this industry what can you say <coughs> <laughs> I can see you know, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm smiling because I'm thinking of how to make that answer short enough okay no, um, you don't have to speak girl <laughs> okay so yeah um, I, I think um, and, and it's, uh, it's it's interesting because I'll start from university you know, we started out in first year, we're all very optimistic. We're probably about 100 girls. Only about 20 of us graduated. And this is, uh, it's so I'll say, the struggle that women in technology face is not really, is not unique to a geographic region. Okay. Yeah. So the same struggles we'll face here, the same struggles that uh, we'll have in Australia, the same struggles that sometimes we'll have in Silicon Valley because I met some women in technology there and we mm -hmm. shared some, some stories. It's... Um, when, when I think of something like uh, software engineering, it's, it's something that, that you need, they are different, I think the different genders bring different strengths right. to, the, to the field. So you've got, uh, you need the ability to be able to focus on one particular thing for a very, very long time mm -hmm. for those people who will be writing code in the background. Yeah. And guys do that very well. Some girls do that very well then you've got to have the ability to be able to correlate different systems. See, you know, if system A is sending this to system B, system B needs to process it in this way, and, and that will follow up on that, that way. Right. And if we are running a project and I make a decision today about system B, it's going to affect system Z in three months time, and that's how it's going to affect it. People who are able to multitask do that very well. And sometimes women excel in this region. I, I can't say I'm a, I have a strength in multitasking, right. but I'm saying some women excel that way. So. I'll say uh, both genders bring the different flavors to the table, mm -hmm. which, is, which are really needed. Uh, but what's most important for a woman in technology, I think if somebody asked me, what would I tell my 19-year-old uh, my me, you know, I would say, when you get in there, don't look at yourself as a woman. You're just a person in technology. Right. Don't look at the boys as boys. They're just people in technology. Yeah. Technology knows no borders. Can I ask you God. though, yeah. do they, you have this great attitude about yeah. don't look at yourself, but do they look at you as a woman? Yes, they do. And then how do you counter that? Like, you know, can she do it if she's a woman? How do you, yeah. how do you, how do you counter that in this industry? In this industry. So, um, I've, <laughs> I'll give you a, a good story. Yeah. I once had to interview someone. I was a senior manager by the time I was leaving Australia and I had yeah. to interview someone and it was, uh, it was a guy who was coming in as a developer and he turned up to the interview room and he told me he must have the wrong room because he didn't. Really? Yes, because he didn't oh. think that he'd be reporting to me. Those things don't but happen to me for a reason. <laughs> 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 but but um, I think, I, I mean, I, I don't blame him. I, maybe it's because I'm able to rise above and say it's the stereotype. When you think of technology, you think of the people we've seen in Silicon Valley, yeah. you know. Um, the Bill Gates of the world. Exactly, right. they are not African girls, and uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, what do I do? I have. If you allow yourself, if you allow, if you allow yourself to see yourself the way they see you, mm -hmm. you then start to become a victim in the situation. So you just look at yourself as someone in technology. You give that to yourself, and eventually people around you will start respecting you for what you do, Amazing. not who you are. I love that. Yeah. I love that angle. Faith, tell us your story. Uh, we'll take a call up, but tell us your story and, as to yeah. how, how do you fit into, into this industry that, that is dominated by men? Finance is equally dominated by men. Yeah. And uh, it's, I think girls are not supposed to love maths, but maths is amazing. And numbers are, I think they just have this power. Mm -hmm. And one thing I keep saying is the biggest mistake you can make is let me through the and allow me to be on the decision making table Amazing. like that's a, that's the worst decision you can make because right. then again uh one of the things i've had to learn is okay fine these the, the stereotypes and those are always sort of gonna be there and i think with the uh, gender equality policies and all that that we've been able to work around mm -hmm. it's getting easier 
but at the same time, there's still people, you really can't work on every individual. It's sort of like an individual process for every guy to be able to now sit and think, okay, should I be treating women differently? Should I be creating opportunities for women? And there's only so much you can do as an individual. Yeah. But then again, at the same time, it's looking at what advantages do you have by the default that you're a woman? And for me, it's simple things like, don't shy away from being a woman. Just right. be a woman, you know? Speak up. Exactly. You have to. Speak up mm. and make decisions from your intuition, if that's how you're wired to make decisions. Yeah. And what that does is, it, it's actually refreshing. Because then, for example, I'm, I'm CFO of uh, Barefoot Power right. also. And what happens is, you'll be making decisions around a table. And most of my management partners are men. But there's a perspective that I'll have differently by virtue of being a woman. Wow. And it is refreshing. Yeah. And the yeah. more you keep giving it a shot, the more you realize, yeah, I can just do me, and it's actually going to work. <laughs> and as long as I'm, I'm equally smart, uh, give me the opportunity. Yeah. I'm not going to let you down. Sometimes it will mean working hard on myself mm -hmm. to get to the place where I now understand, OK, fine, this is a perspective, but this is what I can do. Okay. And give me an opportunity, I'll deliver. Amazing. Yeah. Guys, we'll talk about the core demographic, uh, the target demographic. We'll talk about the consumer, mm -hmm. because yeah. they also play a huge role in this, yeah. um, like that interviewee. But we have a call up <laughs> on the line. Good okay. morning. Good morning. Hi, Evans. How are you? I'm fine. Excellent. Thank you so much for calling. You have a question or comment? I just, uh, basically, just want to comment first to say that uh, I'm very proud of the work that... Uh, Can we get the speaker in the studio doing. up, Masno, and, uh, please? Sorry, Evan, just hold your thought. All right, we hello? just need to get the volume up in our studio. All right, go ahead. I'm just saying that I comment that I wanted to, to say that I'm very proud of the work that Faith and Wareem and many other female entrepreneurs are doing. I yeah. think it's critical that uh, when... <laughs> when uh, especially the social media is, is uh, filled with uh, negative publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for such female entrepreneurs to come up to be role models to young girls. Right. And, uh, I just want to applaud them and to, to tell them that um, uh, they should continue doing what they, they're doing. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for that. Yes, being a role model. I'm not sure if you heard it. We had a problem with our connection. Yeah. But being a, a role model and, and being put on this pedestal, um, we were looking at the, uh, just last year's top 10 on Forbes, uh, mm. Women to Watch in Technology. And that's where the world is headed. People are being recognized for, for following through with their dreams and things like that. But do you see the kind of influence just sitting here where Remo and Faith that you have on a little girl who might be watching who's thinking, I can do that. Does that plague you, or do you think about it? Um, it's, it's humbling, yeah. uh, because I think sometimes as human beings, we see our, ourselves in terms of the things we want to achieve. We yes. don't see ourselves in terms of the things that we have achieved up until this point. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, it's, it's humbling. It and is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's humbling. Faith, for you? <laughs> it's a great responsibility. It sometimes is, I pull the weight on my shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't realize people are watching mm -hmm. until the day somebody stops you on the streets actually and yeah. says, I saw you on TV and I really like what you said. And you figure, I just can't be reckless, you know? Exactly. I have to, I have to leave it up. And I think we need to keep that up. And I like the work that you're actually doing with mentoring girls. Thank you. Yes, that's yeah. really amazing. We have to give back. I yes. think that's the most, that's the most uh, uh, important thing. Now, last year, President Barack Obama came to Kenya and made history. How happy were we about yeah. that? Like, I, and I was hoping, of course, um, to see a huge you know, overhaul in terms of our innovation industry, in terms of entrepreneurship, but it is a slow process. Um, when you looked at some of, you know, the outcomes from last year's GES Summit, where was your mind in terms of your own personal company and the work that you're doing locally um, to take people to next level? Um, last year GES probably happened when I was uh, maybe five, six months old. Right, yeah. <laughs> back, back home. Um, <clears throat> so I unfortunately I didn't get to participate in the GES last year. Yeah. I think at that point is when I was at the point we were talking about earlier. It's when I was looking at it and going like, there is so much to do. Right. Where do I start? Mm -hmm. So um, probably this this year's GES has helped uh, realign my okay. my and, and and refocus me help me refocus my efforts. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I don't I haven't been able to to see much 
in the market or say or in the media about the impact that. Yeah? yeah yeah I haven't been able to see much so I don't know I can't I can't speak to say that it's not happened right but I don't know if it has the reason I'm asking that question is because I wanted to draw a comparison between last year and this year yeah. in terms of the GS summit which you've just come back from yeah um, and of course we'll talk about that but yeah. in terms of looking at mm. I think for me it was just such a huge expectation uh, and I, I yeah. think I speak on behalf of so many Kenyans of Obama has come for sure we'll get jobs you know innovation will blow up the government will do etc but it, it just didn't happen the way we expected faith what can you say to that before we take the next call uh, one of the fruits of GS was actually the we create mm -hmm. center yeah that Obama said we need to be able to push women entrepreneurship okay. and create a space where women can now be sort of have all avenues mm -hmm. to build their business canvas models and take their ideas and basically take their companies to a different level. Right. Which I happen to be a beneficiary of. Oh, amazing. actually. Yay, yes. Good. So it's at Lovington and it's it's amazing. It's Great. just those couple of hours in a week just make all the difference. Okay. And there's also, I believe, uh, the IFC put in some money mm -hmm. that was being managed by Chase Bank mm -hmm. for women entrepreneurs to be able to get uh, interest-free loans. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, really amazing stuff. But what I now feel is, I think just from this conversation, there's a fact sheet, for example, that came out of the current GS, the okay. 2017 GS, mm -hmm. and there are all these opportunities and commitments that have been made. But the question I keep asking is, are we actually beginning to align ourselves to make sure that we can be able to tap into these opportunities? Do the young people, for example, know that these commitments have been made? For energy, for example, there's $38 million mm -hmm. that's been committed for Sub-Saharan Africa. Wow. Can we tap into that? That should, that should trend. Yes. Not mm. other useless yes. topics, but that, those are the things that need to trend. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to talk about how proactive the youth are, how proactive the entrepreneurs are and, yes. the, and the SMEs mm -hmm. yeah. into really tapping into some mm -hmm. of this potential. Because if you guys are working this hard, you're flying all the way to San Francisco, you're yes. representing us. If we're not doing anything, then it really it serves no purpose. True. We have another caller on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Eneka. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Excellent. I'm yes, Emma. You have a question, comment? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Um, okay, I've seen the topic is about women and entrepreneurship. Yes. So I just want to say it's a great team of Kenyan entrepreneurs, of course, representing us in Silicon Valley. Wow. Uh -huh. I was just wondering, you know, right now there is that concept of, you know, um, uh, uh, a bubble of uh, startup, and then you're now seeing uh, a, a new crop of young, uh, energetic uh, women and women who are so quite insightful. Yeah. So my question is, uh, during your stay in Silicon Valley, what, 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 what lesson do you think you, you, you learned and that can be applied to, you know, w women here in Kenya who want to mm -hmm. engage in entrepreneurship? Okay. Great question. Very great question. He mentioned something about a bubble. I don't understand that. Is, I think the question, if I, if I may repeat it, Emeka, yeah. was what lessons we learned in Silicon Valley that can be applied to, to women, young women to here. Young women here. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, he did mention something about a bubble. Yes, yes, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go it's, ahead, Wendy. It's a bit tough. I mean, I, I can say that the lessons that we learned in Silicon Valley that can be applied to businesses here, I wouldn't necessarily say to young women here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the biggest thing for me in Silicon Valley was how important it is for uh, for some of us. We are our, our businesses are not more than five years old, right. but it's it's very important for you to know exactly what it is that you're offering in your business in terms of product and in terms of service. And I know that sounds a little ABC right now. Yeah. Somebody would be like, "Why would you set up a business without knowing what you're offering?" But some of us as entrepreneurs, sometimes we go into the market and we discover that we were offering A, and now they want B, so we switch to B, and then then we kind of forget wh what our was original framework our original framework yeah. we kind of get you get the, the client carries you away and then suddenly you're doing 10 things but you're not very effective mm. in what you're offering out of those 10 things so that was one of my takeaway from silicon valley it's know your product know your service stick to it okay yeah and what about you faith based on that question yeah my takeaway was actually networking you know how they say that your network is your net worth yeah and one of the things i realized is it was a panel of uh, impact investors and i think 80 percent of them are women but as i kept 
talking about what impact investing is, for example, in Silicon Valley, they kept referring to each other as not just partners or people competitors in the same industry, right. but they were friends. Mm -hmm. And what I figured was everybody knew what every other person was doing. Yeah. And so if an opportunity comes up, I can always, for example, call Warimo and say, yeah, there's an opportunity here. I think you should take it up. Right. And basically being able to get, up, get together, especially as young women in entrepreneurship, and share our struggle, yes, but at the same time, be able to know what everyone else is doing. Because at the end of the day, I hear an opportunity, I'm going to call you up. Exactly. So we need to network some more. Amazing. Yes. We are going to play you guys a clip that I am obsessed with right now. It's called Lean In, and it is an amazing, amazing campaign started out by a book, uh, Cheryl Sandberg. Let's talk a little bit about this, because I, I, I'm sure you guys have heard about Lean In um, and what you think. Do you think the stereotype is still very much alive, that we are each other's? We're having a great time, by the way, the three of us. <laughs> we are women and we like each other, right? <laughs> so stop it. But do you think, <laughs> so do you think <laughs> it happens? Guys think that we are, we are out to get each other and we're in this competition, you know? And we're not. We, we are, we're wonderful, we're supportive. And I like that campaign for that. But do you think that the stereotype is slowly dying or is it completely <laughs> gone or do you feel like it's still there and especially in your sector of women who are, are, are each other's worst enemies um i think the stereotype is slowly dying it's still I, it's slowly dying okay i good. actually think that uh women are emerging as such a powerful force and i mean just look at um britain look at germany yay yeah i know we're loving it yes so and and, and, and hopefully and America perhaps, and perhaps yeah, America yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and perhaps America. I think uh, we are more of synergizers mm. rather than uh, we d com competitors with each other. Yeah. And also, I think what we do really well as women is we're able to be vulnerable with each other easily. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So which 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 helps us a lot. So we're able to empower each other uh, more. Yeah. But it is competitive. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, as in, and I think in most industries. Mm. So how do we turn that competition healthy? Your opinion on this? I think there's a paradigm shift beginning to happen. Yeah. And mm. mainly around understanding that competition, to some extent, actually validates what you're doing. Okay. And I have competitors in my industry, for example. And one of the things I've had to do is change my mind and think, and just think around, OK, fine. You're so many years ahead, you have the muscle. I could learn a thing or, you, or two from you. Right. And the fact that you've actually done the hard work means that it's somewhat easier. Mm -hmm. Can we just admit that for a minute? And the moment you do that is you're not looking at your competitors like I'm sort of trying to get the market share and you're trying to get it. Mm. It's more like, OK, can you teach me a thing or two that I don't have to fall into a ditch right. just because you're my competitor? You have the muscle. The business I'm doing today will probably five years down the line be what you're looking for yeah. and basically just be logical about competition and I think if we can address that as time goes by then we can be able to work together. Absolutely. Ubuntu, yeah. it's the way to go. Oh, yes. Yes. We need to work together. Yes. We're not competing, we hope we all win. Yes. We hope we all make it number one, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We have another call on the line, ladies. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you, Lucy? Hi, how are you? I'm great, thank you. You have a question or comment for Faith Wairimo? Yes, uh, I, t I, have a, I have a comment. Okay, go ahead. And I wish to commend her for her tremendous work. Yes. Just hearing about her going to the Global Summit mm -hmm. as an innovator is awesome, and we're all rooting for her. Thank you. And I think it's important for us to recognize and understand that there's a huge market out there. Yeah. And the fact that she's so unique in her own little space mm. to be applauded. Congratulations. Thank you, Lucy, for that. Thank you, Lucy. I'm sure she's talking about both of you. We, I like that. Um, the fact that it's important that we recognize, which is why you guys are here today. Yeah. The rest of 47 counties, they need to watch you and realize this. <laughs> um, in doing some research, of course, on today's subject, I went through the US Embassy site, and I found your profiles. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about that, uh, getting that call, or that email, or that letter, that mm -hmm. we have recognized what you're doing with FINA, we have recognized what you're doing, and we love it, and we want you guys to represent your country on a global summit, how uh, me I would lose it. I don't even, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Well, tell me about that moment, Faith. Actually, I remember I woke up to an email. Yeah. In yeah. San Francisco, the week of, 
a forest, there are a few hours ahead. Okay. And I woke up to an email and I remember I had to read it like three times. Did you submit anything or? Yes. For okay. me, I made an application to the Global Entrepreneurship Network okay. and I knew it was super competitive, but I just kept thinking, I'm so obsessed with Stanford. I was like, I just have to go to Stanford. Yeah. No matter what happens, I have to go to Stanford. I really want to be there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I get the email and I'm like, oh my God, like this is really going to happen. That's awesome. This is really, it was, my, my heart stopped for a minute. But of yeah. course then the pressure comes. You'll tell us yes. about that. <laughs> and what about you? Where were you when it happened? I was actually up country. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing about me is, I was uh, I was a little lazy to apply, and I got pushed <laughs> by my best friend. I love it. <laughs> and, and and she she's um, her name is Nyambura, and she can we please take a moment, Nyambura? <laughs> I just want to say hello. Nyambura, and thank you, Nyambura Warenge, for pushing your girl. I love it. Okay. And 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 then you know she's 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 full of energy, and she's like, you better make sure you apply. Mm -hmm. So out of the fear of Nyambura, I finished my application, and actually did not have any expectations whatsoever. Wow. And it was quite a shocker when the email came through. I was like, I cannot believe that, I, you know, that yeah. they've, I, I'm actually going to go to San Francisco. And then the next question was, what am I going to tell people in San Francisco? Because <laughs> well, you do have to talk. Yes, and, and you're rubbing yeah. shoulders. Yeah. You're rubbing shoulders yeah. with like an Obama. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah. That's why I don't think I'd be invited. <laughs> You'd be all over. <laughs> be all over. <laughs> so yeah, now, now you've got this letter. Mm -hmm. You know that you're going for this great platform. You know that this is probably going to be one of the best opportunities in your career. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare? What did you yeah. do before you even got on a plane? I think entrepreneurship teaches you that opportunity is equals to work, like directly equals to work. Yes. And the bigger the opportunity, the more work you have to put in. Right. So uh, the first biggest thing was um, Ambassador Godek was kind enough to throw us a pitch party. Yay. And I remember, yeah, but I remember <laughs> looking at it and I'm like, can it just be a party? Does it have to be like a pitch party? Pressure, pressure. Why pressure. is a pitch party? Yeah. And then he, he what is a pitch he, party? So a pitch party means the 10 of us who were going for GS, had to come up with pitch decks, and and then they'd uh, invite all these super important people mm -hmm. from Kenya who would be potential partners and investors in our companies, and wow. we were going to pitch what we're doing to them. And I'm thinking, okay, we haven't even left for Silicon Valley yet. But I like that but preparation. We have to do preparation. The work. Exactly. I so love it, it means it means sitting, getting all your ideas together, mm -hmm. and getting a killer pitch deck that is going to give you networks. And I remember after the pitch deck, and this was basically going to be preparing us for what was going to be happening in Silicon Valley. Right. That was amazing. Because then you go to Silicon Valley and you're saying, yeah, home validated me, you know? Right. I presented this to, yeah, KCV and uh, the government, and they, they liked what up. I was doing. Yeah. So you, you better like what I'm doing as well. Amazing. Yes. I mean, and, and I've said that on the show a million times, mm -hmm. uh, opportunity and preparation meet, and you're bound to be successful. For yes. you, what was, um, of course, the pressure, the preparation, everything? Yeah. Did you execute? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. Okay. And it was quite, uh, it was quite intense for me because I had uh, I was doing something else for a client that was quite intense at that same at the mm -hmm. same time and and just like faith you know you see this pitch party and you're like why do I don't want to go in front and talk about my business because one thing people uh, one, one thing about entrepreneurs we are a little bit like artists we're very sensitive about being yes. criticized about yes, our ideas yes. and this is you know you've been working in this little cubicle for a long time just trying to build your dream trying to validate it without anyone coming in mm -hmm. and suddenly you're being exposed and somebody's telling you I don't know I don't think that will work or I don't think that will that I think you need to tweak it here and there and just like artists artists don't like to be told you should use a certain color on your painting instead of another one yeah. so we tend to be a little bit sensitive so uh, in terms of preparation the pitch party was great and then uh, but the main thing was when we got there it actually um, because you talk to so many investors so many other entrepreneurs you actually um, you, you learn to open up and you learn to be willing to take feedback because it's the only way that you're Absolutely. going to be able to Absolutely. We prepare. are competing on a global scale yes. in the 21st century. Yes, There's no room. There's no room for failure at yeah. all or feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, now that you're back home, uh, as we wind up, it's important to see what were some of the things that you learned because I know that this is a learning curve for both yeah. of you. What are some of your take-homes and how do those take-homes then impact 
our audience, our Kenyans, um, and, and how fast will it happen? We're very impatient. Yeah. Yeah, what can you say? <laughs> Thanks for the pressure. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so this was my second time in the US, and, and something really strange that I did not anticipate keeps happening. Uh, every time I go to the US, it's sort of like, it teaches me what is good that is happening back home. Yeah. And it takes me going there for sort of like my eyes to be opened to such immense opportunities here. And I think we, we, we come back home and we begin to get sucked up in the grind. Mm -hmm. And it's more like, okay, fine, I need to do all mm -hmm. the nitty gritty move stuff for me to be. But when you're out there, everything is possible, mm -hmm. you know? And yet again, at the GS, most of the opportunities that I actually made and I'm following up on now that are going to materialize were people telling me, oh yeah, we're doing this in Kenya or we have a head office in Nairobi. So I'm speaking, for example, to Kiva, and Kiva, wow. the lady at Kiva is telling me, yeah, yeah, we have an office in Nairobi. Let me introduce you to the people in Nairobi instead. And we it's are so put easy for them, exactly. it seems. Yeah. Yeah. And we're having a women entrepreneurship fund coming together, and by the time we hit 50 million to begin to execute, we want you to be ready. Wow. And I'm looking at her, I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute, I wouldn't have found that Kiva office with so much ease if I wasn't there for Right. in the first place. Yeah. But again, I think it really built my optimism in the fact that I believe there are enough opportunities to go around twice here, mm. but sometimes we're really caught up in the grind, and sometimes it just takes uh, sitting down for a minute and thinking, okay, fine, let me be optimistic for a bit and see what is really working here and how can I tap into that. Okay. So I've, I actually took the liberty to share a lot of the opportunities mm -hmm. on my page, uh, Dalla Ventures, on things that we can be able to tap into, including the fact sheet. Amazing. Yes. And guys, of course, remember, I will connect you to Della Ventures and, of course, to FINA Consulting. Tell me your your take home and impact uh, as we wind up, please. I think uh, probably talk about two to three. My biggest, I think the biggest impact GS had on me was the hope for the, a hope for the future because you've got 700 people with 700 great ideas. So the world, you know, sometimes you watch the news and you see the things happening in Turkey, you see the things happening in Syria, and you're so... Uh, you know, you just feel like everything yeah. is falling apart. But we've got people who are doing great things out there, not just us. We've got other people who've designed apps that can be used by people without any limbs, that can be used by s using face commands. Mm -hmm. We've got somebody in Thailand who is doing growing organic rice that has improved the life for the farmers. They've gone from 40 cents a day to about $6 a day in terms of income. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the biggest take. The other one was that um, it's never too early for you to start your dream, and it's never too late. I think that was one of the biggest ones because sometimes we uh, we tell ourselves, you know, I'm still working full time, and I mean, I'm I'm in a position where I can't afford to quit my job to to do this thing. Yeah. But you can still do it on the side. You can start to build it slowly. I believe that um, whatever opportunities are supposed to come your way will come when you're ready to receive them. So just go on the journey and just just do it. It's Amazing. the only way you're going to learn. Ladies, thank you so much. And on behalf of so many Kenyans who are watching, we celebrate both of you thank and you. so many other women out there yes. who are doing great a great job in terms of just trying to impact Kenyans, make their lives easier, and we celebrate you today. We can't wait to see what you do next year at the summit. Yeah, thank, yeah? You. thank you for being here. Thanks and Thank you for sharing you. your story with us. We thank really you. appreciate it. Right, so before I play you that Lean In campaign, which you need to, we're going to be leaning in after this in just a second. Lean in to your network of women. They will help you out. We asked you a question earlier on the show. There it is. When and where did Kenya's first Innovation and Technology Week take place? And the answer is 7th to the 11th of May, 2012. And it took place at KICC right here in Nairobi. And our winners are Cash, David Otieno, Hamper, Michael Gala, and another Hamper to Queen Shera. Congratulations to you all. All right. If you're an innovator, an inventor, an entrepreneur, please log on to social media platforms where I will connect you to Faith and Wairimo. They're doing great, great things. And just start. Start a network. Start speaking in any way that you can. Let's be proactive. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. Thank you, Thank you so yes. much. All right. Lean In is a great campaign. Take a look at it. As we say, adieu. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.